Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. Last year at this time, the risk of COVID-19 in teenagers was considered low, with other viruses as well being hardly reported in 2020. But this year, it's another story. Yeah, not only are viruses like the flu and RSV back, some cases of COVID-19 are alarming doctors with complications they were not expecting. Ursula Perry now with what local doctors are seeing and why they are still pushing for everyone to wear a mask. UT Health San Antonio pediatric doctors are seeing the type of complications of COVID-19 that could go either way. Older teens uh, coming in with severe clotting in their lungs, you know, that were very frightening to definitely the families and to the, to the patients as well. These are teens that have no comorbidities, meaning they have no complications prior to contracting the virus, yet come close to death anyway. We had uh, a, a very active teenager also in football, and, you know, he had gotten a blood clot and uh, in his lungs, and he was very close. We were really quite worried about him. But he made it. Uh, I think yeah, but thankfully he made it. Some here have not been as lucky, although Dr. Wu does not have the numbers of deaths in these younger patients. He says once this complication shows up, massive care must be taken. Those patients, you know, all require oxygen, require uh, oxygen, you know, uh, delivery, and then they need anticoagulation or blood thinning of the blood to um, ha wait for the body to absorb that clot uh, or may not make the clot even larger. There's one other complication that doctors are seeing here in San Antonio. It's called neuropathy, where the child appears to be confused, but there's no other outward symptoms, and they are positive on their COVID test. It's alarming, and parents definitely need to keep their eye out for that. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. Now to the latest in Del Rio, where the removal of migrants is ramping up, though there are some divisions on how to handle that humanitarian crisis playing out right now and what should come next for the migrants being released here in the U.S. The Department of Homeland Security is reportedly releasing some Haitians into the United States, despite repeatedly saying they would be immediately expelled from the U.S. How people are being re how many people rather are being released is not clear that leading to some testy exchanges in the nation's capital. So you don't have any estimation of all at all at the, the, the numbers that I'm asking for at all. You don't know how many have been returned. You don't know how many have been released into the United States. Oh, Congressman, let me share something with you quite clearly. I work 18 hours a day, okay? So when I returned from yesterday's hearing, I actually focused on mission. We will get that data. DHS officials have emphasized that most migrants in Del Rio would be expelled or put in expedited removal proceedings. Meantime, the Border Patrol agents seen in this video using horse, their horses and long reins like whips have been placed on administrative duty pending the outcome of an investigation. As San Antonians are stepping in to help Haitian migrants, several groups collecting supplies to donate. Camilla Factory with Black Freedom Factory says they are coordinating with the mayor of Del Rio and another nonprofit to collect donations for migrants in Del Rio. So far, they've ordered 61,000 units of hygiene, menstrual products and baby supplies. She says what's happening on the border is both alarming and enraging. We're seeking uh, baby supplies, uh, non-perishable food items, hygiene supplies as well, uh, socks, underwear. It is in our duty to, to reach the Haitian community and aid in whatever way we can, uh, but to also, also bring to light the complexity of uh, immigrant issues in the United States and the need for reform. The factory says they will be transporting items in the next few days. To learn how you can donate, visit ksat.com for a link. Most of us were glad to see that cold front move in, but the winds that came along with it created some real problems for San Antonio firefighters this morning. Wind fueled the flames that burned down one house. It turned one house fire into three house fires for crews to deal with. One of those houses destroyed. As Jonathan Cotto reports, precious memories went along with it. Three homes and a car, all in flames. 
That's the same fire crews found when they arrived at the home on Viendo Street just after two this morning. Amelia Perez grew up in the home that was destroyed. She says her father and her sister still live there. And she can't believe it's gone. Really sad. We lost a lot of pictures from my mother. My mother died a long time ago. So to come to a house where my mother's pictures are gone, it's very devastating. She says while some memories were destroyed, the outcome could have been worse. I am really glad and very happy that my sister, my only sister and my father are still alive and that is the only thing that matters. Ramon Perez lived in this home for more than 25 years. Today he's left rummaging through what? The fire left behind. The fire not only destroying the homes of this business here, almost falling victim to those flames. Firefighters say the back end of this business did receive damage to the trim, but they were able to quickly prevent the flames from jumping over. Firefighters say they were up against some challenges. While one house was consumed by the flames, winds from the cold front that blew through our area caused the fire to spread to two neighboring homes. We had a, a structure fully involved in fire when we got here, threatening both sides, left and right of the house, and uh, equally threatened, but, but no reports, nothing to, to go on, unfortunately, for how the fire started. Rustin says they are estimating close to $300,000 in damages. The Perez family says they're unsure how they'll be recovering from this loss, but are thankful to those who are already offering a helping hand. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. New at 6, a San Antonio man added to the state's top 10 most wanted fugitive list. 50-year-old Moises Calderon has been on the run for almost a year, wanted on a parole violation. He's also looking at an assault charge. According to law enforcement, Calderon is part of Armandad de Pistoleros Latinos Gang, or HPL. He was convicted in 1991 for murder, sentenced to a 40-year prison sentence. He was paroled in 2014. The information that leads to his arrest is worth a cash reward from Texas Crime Stoppers. You can call 1-800-252-TIPS for that. October 4th, that's the date in-person trials are set to begin again in Bear County. That word coming down late this afternoon from Administrative Judge Ron Ron Hell. The mask mandate staying in place for people not part of court proceedings or sitting in the gallery. After more than a year, jury trials started back up in June, but due to the spread of the Delta variant, officials shut them down again. Ron Hell not ruling out another possible shutdown if there is another significant rise in COVID cases. New at six, a new series we're kicking off called The Investigation. We're taking a closer look at the forensic science used here in San Antonio to solve crimes. Erica Hernandez takes us inside the Bear County Crime Lab. The Bear County Crime Lab is an independent forensic laboratory that is helping agencies in Bear County and surrounding areas solve crimes or exonerate a potential suspect. The staff of 30 who have been awarded the Foresight Maximus Award for operating at 90% or better in efficiency, an award only given to 15 labs in the nation. We got a closer look at the types of forensics being used to solve crime. The fact of the matter is, you know, the citizens of Bear County do deserve to understand what we do. At evidence receiving, it is where investigators drop off the evidence to then be given to a forensic scientist. Our evidence receiving section is the heart of the lab. So we are not affiliated with law enforcement. So we do not uh, do crime scenes. So all evidence that's brought to us is brought by an investigating agency. The serology DNA department screens for biological evidence like blood, semen and saliva and then do a DNA analysis if anything is found. While sexual assault cases are up in the past year and keeping the serology DNA department busy, the drug analysis department, which is able to identify illegal drugs, gets the most cases. 80% of the work we do is controlled substance analysis. That's you know 7,000 or so uh, requests a year for service on controlled substances. It's a huge volume. And then there's the firearms and primer gunshot residue department. Here, forensic scientists take a closer look at the firearms used in crimes, examining markings on a bullet and cartridge casing, and determining if a bullet is fired from a certain gun. As the population of San Antonio increases, so does the amount of crime taking place. The hope in the future is for a bigger lab and to continue to provide efficient crime analysis. We're really looking at what can we do for the county? How do we make the county a better place? Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News.
Let's take a look outside with live cam, but it's not how it looks. It is how it feels. Yes, it is. Today. That's the key, but you know what? In just over an hour, part of it will be how it looks because we've got some nice high thin cirrus clouds rolling overhead. That should make for a beautiful and colorful sunset this evening, especially just shortly after. So about 730 to 745. Good time to get outside. Comfortable too. So we topped out at 87 today. Finally, we're a little below average in terms of the high temperature by a couple of degrees. And you look at conditions out there right now. You look at the temperatures. Bernie already down to 79. Bulverde 82 along with Canyon Lake. Divine at 87, Converse 84, Holotus now 81. As we go through the evening, once that sun sets at 730, temperatures will be falling off fairly efficiently. So by midnight, right near 70. Clear sky, calm wind, lack of humidity out there. Tomorrow morning, I'm thinking about 57 degrees around San Antonio. That would be the coolest morning reading since April. So the coolest reading since April is likely tomorrow. Temperatures do warm up a little bit in the extended forecast. We'll talk about that when the humidity returns and what that means for some rain chances, which right now are looking fairly promising. That straight ahead. The clock is running out on Bear County's efforts to avoid new regulations when it comes to air quality. Friday marks three years since the EPA declared the county's ozone levels too high. Our Samuel King joins us now. More traffic on our roads, just one reason for increasing pollution, Samuel. Yeah, that's right, Steve. In Myra, it's, uh, it's one of the problems that does come with growth, and every driver will soon have to pay for it in the form of more inspections fees. When highways in San Antonio are clogged with traffic, especially when it's sunny with no wind, that increases the chances of smoggy skies. Lau Huffstetler with the Alamo Area Council of Governments monitors the situation. You're subject to increased uh, federal regulations that are more severe depending on the level of non-attainment that you're classified at. Uh, in the case of Bear County, we are classified as non-attainment for ozone. That means our ozone levels are too high. One impact most of us will see if Bear County fails to meet that air quality standard is a new addition to the vehicle inspection process. There'll be emissions testing, just like other big cities in Texas, including Austin and Houston. And that costs, you know, $7 and takes, you know, maybe 15 minutes, depending on how busy it is. But with the emissions inspection added on top of that, we're looking at uh, additional cost to that process. We're looking at about 1850 for every inspection now. Huff Settler says San Antonio benefited in the past from attaining emission standards, attracting major employers like Toyota. And that's why it's 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 so important that we really make an effort to get back into attainment so that we can continue attracting attracting these businesses to, to Bear County. Now, it's not like those emission tests will start Monday. Bear County does have four years to implement that testing, although the government wants it as soon as possible. Huff Settler estimates about 80% of our pollution actually comes from elsewhere. That's other states or countries. So he says it's important that we tackle the 20% we can control by doing things like cutting down on driving during daylight hours and ozone action days and keeping your car tuned. As for traffic of this evening, some slowdowns on I-10 near Medical Drive. You can see that there. A car crashed uh, into, uh, looks like it crashed into the wall there. It's kind of, it's kind of uh, jammed up there pretty good. Uh, so that is causing some delays right now on I-10. Uh, there's also a crash reported there on uh, Wurzbach Road as well, just a little bit up from there. So a couple of issues on I-10, especially inside 1604. And so once you get there, it's about uh, 20 minutes or so to downtown. Also watching the situation out here at 90 approaching loop 1604. And with that, we're going to switch to the transguide view out here. And there's a crash right there. So that's where you get on to 1604. And this is where you see those emergency vehicles. A lot going on out there uh, right now in this area. That's So they're working on that. So if you are someone who travels on the west side or having a lot of issues on Highway 90 uh, lately, and that's the latest one this evening, guys. Yeah, Samuel, a lot going on out there in terms of traffic. A lot of people out and about today, meantime, loving these temperatures. Yeah, and, and okay, the temperatures are nice. The low humidity just doubles it. Yes, it's a good combo. Uh, it's almost like, so what about the temperature? We just don't have the humidity. <laughs> exactly. I'm just glad humidity is gone. Uh, it, it was finally one of those mornings and, you know, even throughout a good portion of the day where it just felt better to keep 
everything opened up and let the fresh air in and circulate and you can sleep with your windows open this evening and well tonight if you want. But keep in mind, we do have a lot of allergens out there right now, some of which are high. We'll show you those next half hour. Let's talk about what's happening out there, what's to come and when things are going to change and it's back to humidity. Let's get to it. 85 degrees right now. It's pleasant and comfortable. Dew point 30. Five. That's the lack of mugginess in the air, and the wind has already diminished and died down a bit. Winds out of the north steady at only 10 miles per hour. By the way, earlier I mentioned those high thin clouds. There they are overhead. They're going to make for a lovely and fairly colorful sunset this evening. So 730 7 to 745, definitely get outside and look off to the west. Kerrville's 82, Fredericksburg 81, 79 already, Rock Springs. Meanwhile, Catula at 91 in the typically warmer locations, Catula, Carrizo Springs, Del Rio, You'll still make it to 90 degrees tomorrow, but I think the rest of us in the 80s, you know, upper 80s mostly. So let's talk about temperatures tomorrow. This is what it's going to be like at the bus stop for the morning jog, for the bike ride. First thing when you step outside, Canyon Lake 53, Pleasanton 55, Hondo 53, Kerrville, Fredericksburg in the upper 40s. Even Bernie, 48 degrees for a morning temperature. Castroville 55, along with Converse, Lavernia 55, and Holotus, Timberwood Park 53 in the morning. So low to mid 50s for most of us to start the day tomorrow. By the afternoon, we climb back up into the 80s, and I think a good portion of our area will make it into the upper 80s tomorrow. So Elmendorf, Lasoya about 88, 89, Leon Springs 86, Stone Oak about 87. High temperatures, they're going to modify a little bit, but we're not looking at the triple digits or anywhere near that anytime soon. Monday, we had the record high temperature. We tied it hitting 100. We're going to be a far cry from that. So we're talking upper 80s tomorrow through the weekend, low 90s by Sunday. That's the little exception there. And then temperatures take a little bit of a drop next week with increasing rain chances. Hard to get much rain out there right now with the dry air that we have in place. Dew points 20s in parts of the hill country, 30s elsewhere, pleasant dry air. Even along the Gulf Coastline, they're experiencing a lack of humidity. But you look in the days ahead by next week, Monday, the humidity is back. So enjoy this tomorrow through the weekend all the way through Sunday. It'll still be pleasant with a lack of mugginess in the air. But by Monday, it returns and with it will be some rain chances as well. So I want to talk about our overall weather pattern. First of all, the visible satellite imagery and you see these really wispy white clouds. They're kind of hard to detect here, but they're moving west to east. Those are what will give us a decent sunset this evening. So colorful sunset. Have your cameras ready and post the photos to the KSAT Weather Authority app. Go down to where it says pins and a little camera icon. Put it there and I can love to share the photos on the night beat. But the overall weather pattern features the main disturbance over the eastern portion of the US. OK, that's what swung the cold front through here. We've got this next disturbance over the Pacific Northwest. That's going to be dropping dropping southward and as it does that it should stir things up for us and right now it looks like it'll have a decent placement to help generate some showers and storms next week. OK, tomorrow through the weekend, nothing but sunshine and some of those high thin clouds, but we boost those rain chances a bit, especially by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Of course, we'll be fine tuning that forecast and it will be bringing you the updates, but at least it's looking promising at this time for some scattered showers and thunderstorms and maybe some downpours next week. 57 in the morning, 80 by noon tomorrow, upper 80s for a high temperature, sunny, not much of a breeze, just light and variable. And into the weekend, no big changes. Those mornings will get back into the 60s this weekend. And next week, with the return of the mugginess, it'll be sticky and humid outside, but it does look at least encouraging for some rain chances. All right, some give and take. Thanks, Adam. All right, UTSA is relishing the role that they've been playing so far this year. Yeah, and that's the role of underdog. And certainly going into Memphis, you would have to think they would be big underdogs, but that is not the case, showing you some respect that there's out there for the Roadrunner football program. When we come back, they'll talk about being the underdogs this week. And why is Jimbo Fisher calling out his Aggies even though they won 34 to nothing? <laughs> Coming up.
The UTSA Roadrunners will be looking for their first 4-0 start since 2012 when they traveled to Memphis to take on the undefeated Tigers going into this game. Their stats are fairly even. UTSA averages almost 40 points a game, while the Tigers are almost 43 per game in the passing department, about the same, 297 yards or 291. Now, but in the rushing department, the Tigers are better on the ground, averaging 224 yards per game compared to the Roadrunners 166. That's where UTSA's defense, ranked 10th in the nation, will be tested going into this battle of the unbeatens as three-point underdogs. I love being an underdog, so if it was 20, 3, 4, it don't really matter to me. I like being an underdog, so it just it may give me a boost. A lot of people probably think it's like we ain't met nobody um, that was that good or it's a fluke, but, you know, we, we just got to prove, prove them wrong. All right, kickoff in Memphis at 2.30 p.m. will be nationally televised on ESPNU. Texas Longhorns open play in the Big 12 this Saturday when they face the undefeated Texas Tech Red Raiders. The Horns haven't won a Big 12 title since back in 2009 when then-head coach Mac Brown led his team to the national championship game. When you take a look at the stats, once again, fairly even until you get two yards allowed. The Longhorns have given up 367 yards so far this season with 184 of that on the ground. It has not gone unnoticed by UT head coach Steve Sarkeesian. When you think of Tech, you think Air Raid, uh, you know, and Coach Leach and all the, the good work he did there. These guys will run the ball, and they'll run it right at you. Uh, they've got a physical tight end uh, who inserts, and they run all the slider runs and things like that, uh, and two big physical backs that, uh, you, know, I, you know, we got to do a really good job of tackling in this game defensively. We've got to do a really good job of getting multiple hats to the ball, um, you know, and not relying on one guy to get these two guys down. The Horns will be seven and a half point favorites in the kickoff at 11 a.m. in Royal Memorial Stadium on Saturday. You can see that game live right here on KSAT 12. Fight Texas Aggies ranked seventh in the nation will face the 16th ranked Arkansas Razorbacks this Saturday in Cowboys AT&T Stadium in Arlington. This is the ninth meeting between these two teams since A&M joined the SEC in 2012. And the Aggies have come away with a win each and every time. That said, the Aggies are only five point favorites against the much improved Razorbacks who boast a 40 to 21 victory over Texas two weeks ago. Despite the fact the Aggies beat New Mexico 34 to nothing last week, Coach Jimbo Fisher called out his team. What kind of response is he hoping for as a result against the Razorbacks? Wins. We'll find out. I hope they go out and play better. And as I saying that, we scored four out of six tries and six out of the first nine. I mean, that's not usually disastrous. But there's just some things with some negative plays and little things here, drop here, misread here, just things that could have got cleaned up a lot cleaner. I mean, there's games where we played and haven't scored but played really clean. That's what I'm talking about. I want to play clean. I want the play to be executed the proper way it's supposed to be executed every time it's executed. And that's, that's what coaches want. Kickoff at Jerry World on Saturday, except for 2.30 p.m. for the national broadcast. Don't forget our KSA 12 MeTV Texas Sports Productions Game of the Week. It's tomorrow night, that will be number three, Smith Valley, facing off against number nine, New Braunfels, in the Battle of the Unbeatens in District 276A. Kickoff on KSA 12's Digital Point 2 station, set for 7 p.m. tomorrow, live from Unicorn Stadium in New Braunfels. Former Spur and now Sixers head coach Doc Rivers says he'll try and talk star for Ben Simmons and staying in Philadelphia despite the fact Simmons says he doesn't want to spend another second as a Sixer. The Spurs are reportedly one of five teams interested in Simmons. He still has four years, $147 million left on his contract. So we'll see how that goes. Don't you think we're past the point of no return, especially with Philadelphia fans? Yes, I would think so. Yeah, they're not going to forget in, what Ben Simmons said. And what he did in the playoffs, yes, too. Yes, right. exactly. Thanks, Greg. Our KSAT Q&A is up next. From rate increases on our utility bills to improvements in COVID-19 and a record-breaking budget for the city. A lot to talk about with San Antonio Mayor Rod Nirenberg, who joins us for today's KSAT Q&A. Mayor, good to see you. Thanks for being here. You Let's too. start with those rate increases. We had the head of CPS Energy here to join us yesterday talking about that, an expected 10% increase. You sit on the board uh, for CPS, and we all know that the utility company has taken a lot of criticism for not being well prepared for the winter storm that we all saw, which was a, a statewide emergency. So what is your message to all of us right now who are expecting to see this increase on our bills? It sounds like within the coming months. Well, first and foremost is that the public, um, the community here in San Antonio owns our utility, the assets, uh, the management, everything that occurs with our public utility is an asset of the public. And so we have to be mindful of the fact we have to maintain it. 
And as you know, uh, the, the city is growing, our demands on the utility are growing. And so from time to time in both utilities, water and electricity, uh, there needs to be rate adjustments. Uh, I think it's uh, early yet uh, to determine what that is going to be in terms of a, a rate adjustment. We also have a very robust public process that goes through not only the governance of city of the of CPS, but also the city council and includes public uh, public hearings. So there's a, still a lot to unfold yet. Um, but but again, the bottom line is we've got to maintain this utility uh, and demand um, that we improve it. Uh, as we've seen, utilities across the state suffering as a result of mismanagement of the state energy system during winter storm Uri, and we need to be more resilient and ensure things like that do not happen again in any part of our state. How would you view, let's say, a 10 percent increase? That's exactly the the, fa the figure that Paula Gold Williams used with us uh, during this interview yesterday. So, again, we need to see data uh, and um, obviously we're, we're going to go through that. Um, but uh, this is a large utility and we need to ensure that it's receiving its uh, adequate maintenance and operations and that we are financially stable. So, uh, but before we receive that data and the information and go through the process, it's a little bit premature to, to judge what the number is going to be. But that is going to be a fully engaged process. I expect it to, to get underway here uh, relatively shortly, but um, it is going to be a timeline that uh, is, is uh, fully vetted by both the CPS and the city of San Antonio, and of course, go through a public engagement process as well. I want to switch over to COVID-19. The numbers have been improving. We're in the moderate risk level. Um, I, you said yesterday that things seem to be uh, trending the right way. Are you resigned to the fact now that we're just going to see surges every once in a while? That, is that what your experts are telling you, that, that there's no kind of putting this thing to bed right now? No, I'm absolutely not resigned to that. In fact, uh, if you listen to the medical folks that uh, have been watching this from the very start, some of these surges and the intensity of those surges could be avoided. Um, keep in mind the Delta variant has occurred during a time when we had vaccines readily available and not restricted from a large majority of our population. Again, folks who are 12 and up have had access to the vaccine for quite some time. We need to improve the vaccination rates. And of course, when we know there's transmission out there of COVID-19, particularly a contagious strain like Delta, we need to do some basic mitigation of that. And that includes um, mask wearing, personal hygiene, et cetera. If we just stuck to those simple things, in addition to improving our vaccination rates, uh, we could put these surges behind us. Of course, COVID and coronavirus are going to be around, uh, but we've got to be able to cope with those. And we have the tools at our disposal to do that. We're expecting potentially for a vaccine for children uh, as young as five to be approved potentially by Halloween and then also the CDC decision on booster shots for certain people uh, under mm -hmm. that recommendation. How is the city preparing to facilitate those two groups uh, in getting their vaccinations? So we are prepared to resource up uh, with respect to vaccination availability. Uh, we have our public sites open and ready. We've increased their hours even at the Alamo Dome. We've got flu vaccine clinics set up as well. Uh, with respect to the COVID vaccine, if and when it is approved for use in school age children between five and 11, I would consider that a game changer. When parents have the peace of mind that every school age child uh, is able to get a vaccine, I think that would be tremendous relief for the entire community. Obviously, we have to get those vaccines out, uh, but that is a day we are anxiously awaiting uh, if and when that is approved by the FDA. So we're post budget now. You can take a deep breath. That process is done. Um, Councilman Mario Bravo decided he wasn't going to vote on the budget. Your reaction to him just deciding he was going to abstain from the vote uh, do you, have you talked to him? Do you understand why he did it? No, I haven't talked. I haven't talked to Councilman Bravo specifically about his vote uh, on the budget, but uh, I have been uh, talking with him about some of the requests he he's made to do some reviews of different processes, uh, some of the amendments that he 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 proposed. 
uh, there at the dais, uh, they have merit in discussion. And so a lot of that stuff you will hear uh, council engaged in, in debate on over the coming months. Um, you know, the, the budget is a very difficult process for everyone involved, including our, our staff, our city staff that works for about six months with public hearings, et cetera, to ultimately arrive at a proposed budget. I'm very proud of this one. It is balanced. It brings our service levels and all of our se divisions back to pre-pandemic levels. Uh, it is not, it does not include any kind of tax rate increase. Uh, and of course, it invests in extremely important areas like housing, uh, public safety. Uh, we bring our streets uh, maintenance budget back to pre-pandemic levels. So this is something I think we can all be proud of as a community that your city government has managed uh, resources in a way that gets us back to uh, pre-pandemic levels, uh, you know, in the 22 budget. There are a lot of cities all around the country that are still struggling trying to make ends meet. We've we've been able to to keep up with the with the flow. You know, the next question I have on my list is talk about the UTSA football team, but uh, we're out of time. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're out, we're out of time. Maybe just a go Roadrunners we can get from you or something like that. Go, go Roadrunners. Tell Greg I'll join him sometime. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> Mayor, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week. All right, have a good day, y'all. We'll be right back. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Still watching a situation on Highway 90 approaching 1604, seeing some uh, big delays uh, there in the red as you're approaching uh, there just past up Pew Road. We did have a crash uh, there that they're still working on to that travel time. 17 minutes uh, from 35 to loop 1604 right now, only 11 minutes the other direction. Again, no. uh, you'll get some uh, issues there once you get past uh, loop 410. And this is how that looks on the TransGuide camera. They've made some progress uh, they're trying to uh, clean this up, but you can see uh, one vehicle is over here and you can see the, the line of cars and they're trying to move uh, the traffic uh, to, to this lane here. So hopefully that does get cleared up soon, but you are seeing that still that activity out there. Again, this is Highway 90 uh, right around Loop 1604 there. So keep that in mind. We'll keep an eye on it and see if anything changes in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, guys. Thanks, Samuel. Meantime, we're all enjoying the changes we saw out there today. We felt out there. This is fantastic. Yeah, we're all in on the 80s. <laughs> yeah, we are. It the feels, decade and the temperature. I was thinking both as well. <laughs> uh, the music especially, yes. And the hair. Oh, man, the mullets, right? <laughs> I can get behind that. Steve, so give me the look like, well. No, I was going to say, I was going to say something about your hair. <laughs> well, I don't have much. <laughs> I had enough. You I had could... the curly locks, though. Remember the pictures? And that was, I share those on Thermometer Thursday every Oh, okay. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, back in my prime. <laughs> 85 right now. <laughs> we'll be down through the 70s this evening. You'll love it this evening. You'll love it tonight. Wait till you see tomorrow morning's forecast. I'll have that and let you know when we have some more promising rain chances coming up. Got some breaking news we wanted to get to before we talk about whether the FDA now moving a step closer they, to offering booster shots in the U.S. They've okayed the Pfizer booster for people 65 and older and anybody else who is considered at high risk. If that sounds familiar, it was the FDA advisory panel that made that same recommendation last week. Yeah, and I believe the CDC still has to sign off on it before it goes to into effect. But again, the FDA authorizing Pfizer booster shots for older and at risk Americans. All right, let's switch over to weather right now. And, you know, I was just talking about Adam Kasky and his hair, <laughs> curly hair when he was in college. Oh, we were able See, to. See, I have it in the system. I don't right, know, know what is that know. graphic there. Do, on top do, you, of it. do you remember the old show Greatest American Hero? Where the guy kid would like fly into walls and stuff. That's kind of what you look like in college. That's what I'm saying, you know. Oh, back in my prime, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, actually, I do know why there's that weird image on top of it. That was because I had a smiley emoji over um, the lady's face right there, just in case you didn't ah. want to be on here. It's been, <laughs> been long enough. But I think that got overwritten with something else with this Probably latest update that we had. Up. Probably a good move on your part. Yes. Yeah. 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 She's a pilot now. I'm doing, doing great. Anyway, uh, let's, 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 let's jump into the forecast. Before. Yes. Let's talk about that low humidity. Yes. That may no, not produce those let curls Let me click today. past let's this. Talk. Oh, I zoomed in. Oops. Let's talk more about your old girlfriend. Oh, my gosh. I see your kids.
in that photo. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, I was what, 25 pounds lighter? I had a full head of hair. Oh, those are the days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so looking at the temperatures right now, these are the days right here, huh? Gets you in a good mood. Amarillo 79 along with Midland, Dallas only at 80. Laredo Corpus Christi 87, and we're currently at 85 here in town. And we topped out at 87 degrees earlier today, and currently 79 Fredericksburg and even Rock Springs at 79. So we're seeing those temperatures start to fall off once the sun sets, which is 7.30 p.m. We'll really see the numbers start falling. Most of this evening will be in the 70s. Now watch this though. Tomorrow morning, we get those readings in the 50s. This would be the coolest morning since late April. So we're thinking about 48 Kerrville and Fredericksburg. So some 40s in the Hill Country, but 53 Hondo, 55 Pleasanton and around 57 degrees, especially downtown San Antonio and some surrounding areas. Elmendor 57. Look at Timberwood Park. You'll be 53 degrees. Bernie 48 to start the day. How about that? Even Sagina 53. So that's what we're expecting tomorrow morning. Temperatures do rise a little bit in the days ahead. We'll creep our way upward just basically degree by degree almost as we get into the weekend. We'll have those morning temperatures back into the 60s and then next week the humidity returns. Let's talk about a return of the mugginess out there. North wind today already calming down, but it's that north breeze that pushed in the drier, less humid air. Dew points right now, 30s, even along the Gulf coastline. That's usually where we have the real thick and highest humidity. Those dew points well into the 70s. Even they're getting a break in Corpus Christi and up and down the beaches. Very pleasant. Would feel nice to be out there fishing right now. Lack of humidity. Uh, it, that's not going to change until we get into next week. So we're not going to see a real push off the Gulf of Mexico of wind. That breeze isn't going to really pick up until Monday. Monday, you'll notice the humidity and it's going to be really sticky. So enjoy the next several days tomorrow through the weekend with a lack of humidity. Some high thin clouds streaming overhead west to east. That's going to give us a picturesque sunset. So we could give it a sunset advisory if you wanted to this evening. And again, have your cameras handy and post your photos. I want to see them. Big upper level disturbance east coast. That's the one that actually swung the part of the system and overall pattern that swung the cold front through here yesterday. Our next disturbance that's moving into the Pacific Northwest. This is going to drop southward, dig its way down into the four corners and even northern Mexico through the weekend. Sunny and comfortable here. This is just waiting off to the side and by next week it should position itself to where it would give us encouraging rain chances and more promising shot for rain where more of us could get it than just a few neighborhoods. So here's the breakdown tomorrow. Nothing but sunshine, a few high thin clouds, 57 in the morning, 88 for the afternoon high. Nothing really changes through the weekend. We just tack on a few degrees to the temperatures both in the morning and afternoon. 92 the high on Sunday. Next week on Monday, humidity returns with it. We're expecting that disturbance and that could give us more encouraging and promising rain chances, even a few downpours. So that's really the next thing we'll keep you updated on. We will enjoy this right now. Thanks, Adam. In case you missed it, coming up next. Here's today's in case you missed it. And a good morning to you. It's Wednesday, the 22nd of September. San Antonio Fire Department responding to the 300 block of Yendo Street to find three homes and a car on fire. Crews on scene say that call came at around 2.20 a.m. They tell us firefighters arrived to a house fully engulfed in flames. The Biden administration is facing a political battle on both sides over this border crisis and the mass deportations here in Del Rio, Texas. Roughly 8,000 migrants, many Haitian, remain under that Del Rio bridge waiting to be processed. Thousands of immigrants have already been sent back to their home countries. Today, all eyes on the FDA. Multiple sources tell ABC News the agency will say yes to a third shot of the Pfizer vaccine for millions of Americans as soon as today. If that happens, the issue heads to the CDC. Scientists there will decide whether to recommend these Pfizer booster shots to any or all of the following Americans, people over 65, people who have health conditions that put them at high risk, or frontline workers like nurses, doctors, police officers, and grocery store workers. It's a day dedicated to safely playing in the streets of downtown. This year's Ciclovia is back in person after being virtual last year. The YMCA of Greater San Antonio encouraging people to get outdoors this Sunday. 
You can do outdoor activities at any time, but Sickleby is from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. On Sunday, there's going to be exercise classes, biking, even live music along the museum reach route. You can find a link to a map on our website that shows you exactly where that route goes. There's also going to be activities at Roosevelt Park and Confluence Park. Wearing a mask is encouraged. For more information, head to ksat.com. <laughs>a couple of issues there in the roadways before we go this is a loop 410 on the northeast side there's a, a vehicle fire there you can still uh, see at least uh, one TxDOT hero vehicle uh, on the scene and some slow traffic uh, moving eastbound on the loop 410 on the northeast side also still watching the situation on highway 90 approaching 1604 traffic down to nine miles per hour there and this is how this looks on uh, trans guide we've been following this throughout uh, the six o'clock news here and you can see uh, traffic down to one lane there as crews continue to work on uh, what's going on there but you see that vehicle that kind of uh, wiped out there a little bit earlier is on the move so that's some good news out there so again slow down to highway 90 approaching loop 1604 Adam. And Sam, tomorrow morning, oh, you can cruise with the windows down. If the allergens don't bother you, we've got quite a few allergens out there today, some of which are high. And morning readings will be in the 50s tomorrow, then gradually rising back. Oh, geez, I wasn't supposed to show that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 I wasn't supposed to show that. Hey, <laughs> yes. Ah, click to the wrong one. Okay, <laughs> we're back, and this is going to fill in. There we go. Sunny through the weekend, humidity. Promising rain chances next week. Oh, boy. That was you a know, fantastic accident. Maybe instead of the suns on your forecast, you could have, like, little Casky pictures. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we have to animate them. Curly top the bobblehead. Awesome.